Welcome to Certis Major. I'd like to introduce you to Bloodier's build order. This build order has defined the Certis Major metagame. There are some other high-level build orders now, but they are either Bloodier's build order with minor modifications, or they are specifically designed for no other purpose than countering Bloodier's build order. So this should give you an idea what you're dealing with. This is top quality stuff. You can loosely divide a standard game on Certis Major into the following stages. The expansion stage, where you capture and secure your own side expansion and perhaps raid the side expansion of your enemy. This is usually quite build order dependent. With a bad build order, you die right away. Then there is the stage where you get the middle mass, consisting of a quantum gateway, some defenses and a few civilian structures. And there is the teching stage. Usually you want to tech up very fast to T3 land and get a lot of air. Your goal is to drop your T3 land units all over the place. That's why you're getting air control for your own drops and for intercepting enemy drops before they arrive on your side of the map. Just a friendly reminder that fighters require intel to work and they are called interceptors, not afterceptors for a reason. Frequently, the game is decided in the T3 land stage but a few particularly balanced games enter the late game stage. That's where you typically get T3 air or experimentals. Those of you who have seen my latter tutorial for Desert Planet 2, the link to the playlist is in the description below, are probably going to see some similarities here, but there are a few differences. Certis Major has middle mass, which adds an important gameplay element. ACU battles in the center are not exactly unusual, and sometimes, you can get a quick victory or loss there. While both maps have a similar number of mass extractors per player, 23 for Desert Planet 2 and 24 for Certis, Certis has a lot more rock reclaim. Together with the middle mass, achieving a large scale or high tech production is much easier on Certis Major than on Desert Planet 2. And early air is not as important on Certis. There might be an occasional bomber or drop but you don't usually have a pronounced T2 air stage where ACU snipes are likely. That's because the ACU is typically closer to your production and more protected than on Desert Planet 2. As you are less decentralized on Certis, preparing your land setup against enemy T3 air may be viable. Then you can economize on your own T3 air entirely and get an experimental instead. So you see, similar but not the same as Desert Planet 2. Hello, Bloodier. Thank you for taking your time to talk about your Certis build order. Thanks for having me. Um, I really appreciate what you do for the FAF community, so it's really cool to be a part of it. Bloodier, I can see you're queuing up a standard Hydro Rush, a land factory for mass extractors, the assisted Hydro. Then together with your two engineers, you're getting another three power generators before your air factory. Why three? Wouldn't two be enough? Uh, no, two wouldn't be enough. Um, I, I get it because uh, of the factory that I built on the cliff uh, afterwards. Uh, so I, I do require the extra energy to do that. Uh, also, I would normally power stall if I did that, but um, I move my ACU in between, so I avoid the power stall while the ACU is walking. Why build the factory there in the first place? Uh, well, you get a better position to create engineers to reclaim the cliff, um, as well as, you know, you have a shorter distance to your opponent's expansion. Can you talk about your expansion priorities? You made five engineers, one tank and one scout, and then engineers again. What goes where, in which order, and why? Um... So I, I go around the back first with an engineer, uh, grabbing some maxes and uh, getting some of the reclaim the way. Getting some of the reclaim is, is pretty nice um, because early on, even though there's a lot of reclaim on the map, you might not be getting it so early. You just want to grab some of that on the way. Uh, so, and then the back reclaim is, is nice uh, that it is in, on the way, kind of. You're going to go there anyway. And that path is quite protected. Uh, it's unlikely that it will be raided by an early lab, whereas the further expansions are much easier to raid. So what I do is I, I make a um, tank in between 
um, and then only send an engineer to the furthest expansion when it's safe. You went second air fighter first. Why no bomber? Um, usually people go for second air on a map like this. So it's just a bit risky because you might be uh, losing your engineer to the bomber. It feels a little bit like gamble where you have to micro your engineers a lot and enemy has to micro their engineers a lot. Uh, some people can abuse the fact that I don't make a bomber first. Uh, but I usually try to scout the enemy air factory. If they uh, just um, didn't make an air factory at all, then I'll make a bomber and it'll be fine. It, it's just a preference thing. I, I like to be safe rather than be aggressive. Your ACU left your core after the cliff build and now it's on the way to your right side expansion. Why the detour instead of going straight into the middle? So the first tank that I make is to protect uh, the expansions from an early lab and the reason the ACU goes there afterwards is that there might be more tanks coming later. And I, I try to either I make a factory there or I make a PD. Uh, if I make a factory, I'll make a PD afterwards with some engineers. Um, but yeah, if, if enemy is sending a lot of units already, then I may just make a PD and then go to the middle. Uh, the reason being, uh, I, I need to block the reinforcements there. I don't really want to worry about the right side. I just want to send everything through the left side. Uh, this is I'm assuming that we're in the bottom position. Um, so I want to I want to send everything to the left side and don't want to worry about the right side. And if the enemy sends a lot of stuff through the right side, then they'll get overwhelmed in the middle and the left side. So they can't really do much about it until a bit later on. And at that point, I will be able to reinforce me anyway. So it'll just be there for blocking some early raids. And uh, I don't need the early, I don't need the middle mass so early anyways. So it's not really a huge problem. You're scaling up your power spam. Getting ready for reclaim? Yeah, there's a lot of reclaim on this map. There's a lot of mass. And you want to time your power spam in a way where... Uh, when you're starting to reclaim a lot, when you're starting to get all of your mexes out, that's when you start your power spam, or a bit earlier, hopefully, so that you don't stall uh, when you're getting all of that mass. I see an extra land factory next to the one you've gotten when a cliff built. What is that for? So, my engineers just kind of happened to be there, because, you know, I made the cliff build of the factory. So, I'll just make another one for the, uh, you know, for making units there. It's not really uh, anything special there, but uh, it is convenient to have a second factory there, uh, and uh, it is, again, closer to the enemy base. I'll be able to make engineers from there as well if I need to. Will you add more factories? Uh, so I go for 12 factories usually, or something like that. Um, if you make a lot more factories than that, then you're pretty all in. And once you run out of reclaim, you're going to be pretty fucked. Uh, but if you make less, then you might get just overran. So, like, around 12 is a pretty good mark for this map. Uh, I try to go for that, usually. You're getting a ring of mass charges before your first T2 mass extractor. Why is that? Uh, I want to make sure that I can use all of the reclaim that I might get from the middle. If the enemy didn't go from the middle at all, then... Uh, I would overflow some of the mass probably. So I want to make sure that I don't waste any mass. I, I make the maxes just uh, the surges just in case. And I don't have enough power to spend the mass super fast anyway. And like starting like five mass extractors at once is it takes so much power to do that it's it's much more preferable to just send uh, spend the mass a bit slower. Don't try to spend it all at once. Is there any rule when to go T2 land on your factory? Uh, you generally want to go for any kind of tech when the game looks like it's going to be a, a stalemate for the foreseeable future. Uh, since I have some experience uh, in this map in particular, I can kind of tell it, it's going to, like, like soon, soon enough, we both have a bunch of units and neither one of us can really do any significant damage, at least 
you know, it can get really good trade still if you're, if you're attacking into it. So, uh, that's a good time to attack. Uh, same goes for T3 for uh, a some part, but there it's a bit more complex situation with that. T3 is generally just more efficient than T2, so you might want to go for it anyway, uh, even earlier. But that's more like a strategical thing. If you just want to play super standard, then uh, yeah, it's a good idea to tech when there's uh, you can sense a kind of a stalemate coming. And that goes for air as well. So if, if there's not a lot happening, or you, you know that there won't be a lot happening in the future, then that's when you go for something, right? That's when you try to make something happen. And uh, there's a difference between tech and eco in uh, you want to get eco with the reclaim that you've got. Because if you invest um, your reclaim into factories or whatever, then you'll run out of mass very shortly afterwards once you run out of the reclaim. So it's safest to use the reclaim to get the economy and use time to get tech, right? Like it's completely kind of a different resource. Uh, even though they might sometimes seem uh, the same, you might not be able to tell what the differences between when you should tech and when you should eco, but uh, there's a pretty clear cut difference, I think. Very interesting perspective. Your first Percival is leaving your factory at 1120. You have some T2 air to drop it, and there are pillar drops already on the move. Yeah, I think drops uh, are a bit underused in general, but you know, we're getting to the point where people are just dropping all over the place. People are getting good enough that um, drops just become uh, godlike. And and that's that's what you should do on any any map which goes to T3 stage. Generally, just drop all over the place and try to deny enemy drops. It becomes a war of dropping and counter dropping. Um, trying to defend your expansions from the enemy. You, you, that's why I place my uh, you know my ACU in that way as well. I, I try to counter the drops and you know I make I try to position my air in a way that stops drops and uh, yeah I'll try to make drops happen myself and that's why also um, th there is that huge uh, air transition at the same time as you go for T3 land uh, because you want to be able to drop and you want to block the drops. You're upcycling some T1 factories and getting your T2 support factories to T3 immediately. How important is it to achieve scale after your drops have dealt the first bit of damage? Uh, well, you don't really need the T1 factories anymore at that point, and, and T2 as well. At the, when you're getting the T3 stage, uh, all the other tiers become pretty irrelevant, though you still want to have a few T1 factories uh, ready for reclaiming, uh, sending engineers to reclaim, and, and you just want to queue up every now and then just like five engineers attack move them somewhere uh, so that you can reclaim uh, the wrecks after it battles uh, but all the rest uh, you either want to upgrade the T3 or uh, reclaim and generally going for more than like three T3 factories might be a bit overkill depending on the map of course but in the vast majority of maps uh, you know you just want to go over a couple and at that point you're better off like adding engineers if you need more production or or just you know uh, going for experimentals or something. Why is your ACU in that expansion? So, um, in in the in the furthest expansion, uh, it is there to do not drops and uh, to create TMD. Uh, I like to go for T two. Sometimes I go for a gun to deny the drops. T two is good for TMD and for anti air, though it's still a pretty risky position. You can go for uh, the middle. Or your own base, actually. Your base is sometimes a bit vulnerable to drops as well. So, um, uh, so all of these positions are, are fine. Uh, but it's a bit easier to defend your base, I feel like, than the, the furthest expansion. So, you know, it's it's a trade-off, certainly. You're trading off some uh, of your safety for uh, a different kind of safety. Let's say that. Your replay ends shortly before the 14 minutes mark. Is that when average Joe dies against you? Um, well, it really depends on the level the player is at, right? Um, there, you know, I guess top players, uh, it, the games don't end like that. And 
uh and games take a lot longer usually uh sometimes there are a, a lot of like weird shit happening in the game anyway so it isn't so clear cut it's just simply like a framework where this is where i want to go uh and uh you know this is this is where you should be aiming to go in in a game and like once the t3 dropping whatever trading with t3 begins at that point usually usually the game you know will end eventually on that phase like usually you don't really get to experimental so especially if you're playing yo yeah and you won't be making bad boys anytime soon so you know generally it, it will end with percival's it won't end on the first drop unless uh your opponent is completely unprepared but um you know or if there is a huge skill difference of course uh then the, the game might just end with your pressure of course Ever gotten cheesed on Certus? Yeah, people cheese me all the time. Um, Turin Tremor likes to go to the side with his issue. Uh, that, I wouldn't call that really a cheese, but sometimes he does build artillery there, which is kind of weird and kind of all in it because if you lose that position, then you're dead. Um, then there is then there are some people who like to like do a pillar pro push uh through the middle I, I think i've seen slow do that uh you know do a pillar push and once you have shields and whatnot and just uh aco with the gun and nano if you're you yeah and stuff like that and, and you know that kind of stuff works sometimes um but you'll learn to deal with it eventually and sometimes you're gonna get caught off guard sometimes you're gonna lose games but uh you know Macro player is the one who will keep improving uh, while people who cheese are. Well, the cheese will fall off at some point. Uh, there's also people who um, have tried to. Well, especially. Especially. Mozart. Man Mozart. Uh, he's, uh, he's tried to abuse the way that I play the game. Uh, I, I tend to do the same things. Uh, pretty much in the same maps uh, not only on Certes for Loki as well I mean I always went for Inti's first so he went only land uh, at some point uh, tries to blind counter me and and that certainly uh, is a thing and it's kind of annoying but um, if you're if you're really good at scouting and responding to this uh, it shouldn't be too big of a problem uh, you can always mix it up a little bit like that Build order doesn't change that much for if you you know make an early lab or something, so you can you can definitely do that if you feel like people are getting you know you're getting a bit too predictable, but I haven't felt the need to do that myself. Awesome, Vladir. Thank you so much. Are you uploading your gameplay anywhere? Uh yeah, I uh, I have a Twitch channel, uh, which is my name, Vladir. Uh, I play some subcom sometimes, uh, sometimes other games. I've streamed a little bit of StarCraft, uh, some uh, Tooth and Tail, which is a game in Alpha. I've uh, streamed that. And uh, sometimes other games too. Uh, I don't stream as frequently as I'd like, but uh, sometimes I, I do. And it's really cool when people are watching and interacting, and, and I really love it. It's a really cool thing, and I should do it more often, to be honest. Great. I'll make sure to put a link into the video description. Thanks again, Bloodier. This has been very instructive. Thanks for having me.